U.S. media reporting that Amazon has chosen two sites, one in a borough of New York City, the other a suburb of Washington, D.C. Um, we were hoping to speak this morning with Mark Cohan, who's the chair of Toronto Global, the uh, group that put the g- bid together for uh, the city of Toronto. said he couldn't speak with us just yet because he hasn't actually received official word from Amazon about the results, but the word seems to be all through the media. And Richard Florida also helped put together the bid when he was on the board at Toronto Global. He since resigned from that board so that he could speak out about the flaws he saw in the bid process. He is a professor at the University of Toronto's Rotman School of Management and School of Cities. Richard, good morning. Good morning, Matt. You have long been an outspoken critic of this bid. Um, What do you make of the fact that it seems as though it's concluding, Toronto's on the outside, and Amazon is um, splitting the winner? Well, a few things. First thing said is I'm a big fan of Toronto Global. I'm a big fan of Mark Cohan, who was my board chair and is a personal friend, uh, and a big fan of Toronto's bid. I think Toronto did it right, Um, at least in the initial stages when I was a board member. It had no gross, uh, overwhelming financial incentives. It wanted to invest that money in Toronto and make Amazon a partner in Toronto's development. Uh, I resigned because what I saw U.S. mayors and governors doing uh, throwing, you know, billions, hundreds of millions, if not billions at Amazon. So, so I thought Toronto did it right. That wasn't the problem. The mm. problem was, uh, cities all across the United States really coughing up lots of money in, in taxpayer money incentives. Um, I think this in one way is a complete surprise in, in one way. I think no one expected them to split between two cities, this so-called HQ two, their second headquarters outside of Seattle. In other ways, it's completely predictable. Um, not just myself, a group of, of urbanists, all were saying that this wasn't about a single headquarters site. This was Amazon crowdsourcing information from 200 plus cities and then a deep dive into 20 finalists, shortlisted cities, because they wanted the site a variety of things. And, and just one more thing. The only way you could make sense of a shortlist that included a superstar city like New York, a a national capital like Washington, D.C., a city like Chicago and Boston, alongside much smaller cities like Pittsburgh and Indianapolis and Columbus and a southern city like Miami, is if this was not about a single HQ2 site. It was about a potential headquarters in New York or Washington or Boston or Chicago, a Latin American headquarters in Miami, and logistics and transportation facilities in places like Indianapolis and Columbus. I don't think this is over. I think this is a first step, and I think we got to keep our eyes on the ball. And is that why you said that the whole process was a sham? Yeah, you know, when this happened, I actually reached out to many mayors and governors that I do know. And, and especially when the finalist cities came out, and I said, you know, you know, people, it's crazy. You are progressives, political progressives. You believe in, in uh, taking on inequality, addressing housing affordability, building a more equitable and just city. Why are you doing this? And, you know, mayors like Bill de Blasio, uh, Muriel Bowser, I could go on. These mayors all know one another. They get together in meetings of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Uh, They were reluctant to do so, and that's when I organized a petition signed by more than 16,000 people and every urbanist and urban economist of note Mm. that said the mayors should have a non-aggression pact and say no to Amazon. Look, it's a sham for a simple reason. A data-driven, smart, strategic, trillion-dollar company like Amazon knew exactly where it was going to go from the beginning. Now, it may not have known it was going to this site in Long Island City, New York, or that site in Crystal City, Virginia, but it kind of knew it was going to New York or Washington or Boston or Toronto or Chicago. Maybe there were eight to ten metropolitan areas it could go to. To put 236 cities through the effort and expense – I think it's fairly incredible expense. You know, no journalists have estimated this, but when you think of the consulting time and the staff time and the board member time and the time deflected from doing other things, mm. it's a lot of money that Amazon uh, took already from these communities. So I think it's a sham because they always knew where they were going to go and they created a, a kind of a misleading process. Well, what was wrong with Toronto throwing its hat in? I mean, the bid, and if, if you've seen the bid uh, book, I mean, it, it's it's a love letter in some ways uh, from this city and it celebrates the great things that are going on here. Um, some people would say, you know, nothing... Uh, the gained, uh, nothing lost because we tried and we, you throw no, something I, in and who knows what's going to happen. And my advice to the board when I was a member was definitely go for it. Uh, Toronto is competitive. This is not a small city in the heartland. Uh, Toronto can land something like this. And what I said to Toronto and several other cities that I advised uh, informally, not formally, as I did for Toronto, I said, you know what? I don't think this is about an HQ2. So take that out of your head. Think about getting to know Amazon and date Amazon and getting close to their site selectors because 
if you make the short list, I think something good will happen to you. But I, but, but I also said, don't go down this road of offering these tremendous incentives because Amazon's going to come back for them. Make a pact with yourself that you will say to Amazon, if you want to come to my city, whether that's Toronto or Philadelphia, my former hometowns of Pittsburgh and Newark, um, that you would come as a partner in building a better city, that you would co-invest with that city, Amazon, in building better transit and transport, mm. that you would co-invest in addressing affordable housing. Engage them as a partner. Don't hand them millions and in some cases, as I said, billions in public incentive. Are they interested in that? In Seattle, we saw that Amazon fought city council over a tax that would have helped the homeless, um, said that they would move some of their businesses out. So, I mean, would they at all be interested in this? Or is this really just about extracting as much as you possibly can from the place uh, where you're going to land? hard to say for sure because they have been entirely closed mouth. And and believe it or not, um, I know many people in many companies in site selection. I know not a single soul in Amazon. So they've been very tight lipped. They've, they've put everyone under these so-called non-disclosure agreements. Right. That's why people can't talk. They, they're legally bound to not be able to talk. Look, I think 80 percent of the signal points at Amazon using this as a process to go after incentives. And, and I want to add this. If you look at these two finalist cities, it was pretty easy to pick that. And, and I think many of us did. Out of the 20 finalists, three cities, three city sites were in the Washington, D.C. area, one in Virginia, one in Maryland, and one in D.C. Two were in greater New York, one in Newark and one in New York City. So so they already kind of pre-coded this. But some people, not Toronto Global people, but some people in other cities around the United States have told me, Richard, you're being a little bit too critical. Amazon kind of sees what you see. They're giving me a coded message. They, they don't really want all of these incentives. They want to be a partner in development. Now, mm. I think that, you know, who knows why people are saying that, maybe to be nice, uh, maybe to be decent, maybe to make themselves feel better. But wouldn't it be a great thing if Amazon in announcing these sites said, look, we've learned our lesson. We've learned about economic development. We want to be a better partner in development. We want to be a better partner to New York and to Washington, D.C. and our home headquarters town of Seattle. We want to invest with you. We don't want to take and, – and, and two things. One, it would be great for their brand uh, if they were seen as a good socially responsible corporation, not an extractor. And two, even a billion dollars. You know, I hate to say this. It's such an enormous sum that makes the head – it boggles the mark. Yeah. But for Amazon as a trillion-dollar company hauling in, I believe, $20 billion in profits every quarter – it's rounding error on their bottom line. The, the benefit of not taking incentives to their brand is far better. Look, I think I'm being romantically optimistic about this. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 my hope is that Amazon steps up here because the reality is the mayors and governors of American cities have not. We'll see what the official word is. In the meantime, um, a lot of people wondering uh, what we went through and whether it was all worth it. I appreciate your perspective on this, Richard. Thank you, Zavar. Hey, thank you, Matt. And I think I think I think the bottom line is Toronto did it right. I wish other cities behaved like Toronto. Thanks again. Richard Florida, professor at the University of Toronto's Rotman School of Management and the School of Cities, talking about Amazon, Toronto's bid for uh, the Amazon headquarters, second headquarters, and to Richard's point, what we did and what we didn't do, which is offer um, millions or billions of dollars in uh, incentives. We'd hope to speak with Mark Cohan, chair of Toronto Global this morning. said he can't talk uh, until he has official word from Amazon about the results, but he will be on the program when we get that word.